Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel. I am the Common Sense Guy, or as people like to get to know me better as, I'm Jason. How are you all doing today? Today we're going to be talking about peace processes with terrorists. And this time it's not the EU or the UN that's trying to do this with Hamas, it is the US doing this with the Taliban in Afghanistan. What? I thought that the US never actually negotiated with terrorists. I thought that that wasn't what the idea of uh, terrorism was, as in for the US. Not to negotiate with terrorists, because it would uh, incite or encourage more terrorists to be able to go against the US if you negotiate with them. I thought that that was a principle set in stone. Now, I'm not saying that that's a good or a bad idea. I'm literally just trying to point out the fact that you are literally trying to gauge peace processes with terrorists. In other words, given the legitimacy, whether you believe in their cause or not, in their cause. Let's get into the video, shall we? So, as you can see, I'm not lying, and this is from the BBC, so you know it's credible. The Taliban talks. Will negotiations lead to peace in Afghanistan? Yes, will they? Probably not, to be fair. After all, when they were being occupied, and I use that term as I mean it, occupied, the Taliban were still fighting back and trying to get what they wanted and get the West out, so to speak, and everything else like that. So I don't see how this peace process is going to benefit anybody apart from the terrorists, personally. But, again, that's just my point of view on this, so let's have a look through the story, shall we? So, the significant progress said to have been made during six days of talks between US officials and the Afghan Taliban suggests that both sides are serious about trying to find a peaceful solution to a 17-year conflict that has scarred Afghanistan. And I would say that if this was a political terminology, if this was to do with the idea of regime change or even sort of forms of I don't know, more legitimate ideas than I'm Muslim and I believe that I have to wage a jihad against the West because my book told me to. Maybe that would be more of a cause for me to sit down and have peace talks with somebody. But, you know, I'm probably bigoted. But with the Taliban currently refusing to hold talks with Afghan officials and negotiations relating to unsolved matters still to continue... What has actually been agreed during the meetings in Qatar? Surprising that Qatar are involved in this, isn't it? As in holding a neutral ground for the US and the Afghani Taliban to be able to talk, isn't it? Very, very fucking interesting that, isn't it? More importantly, if the Taliban are refusing to hold direct talks with the Afghan officials... If you're making peace processes with the US, when the US pulls out, as they are planning to, where does that leave the peace process with the Afghani people? Or does it only matter for the US to talk about peace with the US? I just don't see what the point of this is if they're not even going to talk to the leaders of the countries that they already are in. What does that accomplish apart from PR? for both sections. I'm going to butcher this name. Sekunda Kamani, the BBC's Afghanistani correspondent and senior Afghan journalist Sami, again sorry, Yousafzai, look at what we know so far about the talks and what it could mean for the future of the country and the foreign forces operating there. What are the Taliban? Why are Afghanistan is so dangerous? Because you have Islamic terrorists that are going against its own government, country, because of differences in Sunni and Shiites, as it was under Saddam Hussein, that hasn't changed at all. 
and the conflict between the Taliban and other US groups, sorry, terrorist groups in Afghanistan that are fighting against US and allied troops for whoever is down there at this moment in time. But let's let's go through this and let's have a look, shall we? How significant were the talks? Well, if they're not going to talk to the actual Taliban officials, the government that is there in that country, then probably not so much. Probably not so much. Probably not significant at all, actually, to be fair, because it's not going to last, is it? So anyway, let's, let's get on with this. Both the Taliban and the US officials have said progress was made in the latest set of talks in Qatar. Again, Qatar, natural, natural. Whatever the fuck it is, it likes to hold terrorists. And despite continuing violence on the ground in Afghanistan, is that from the Taliban or is that from the US? Especially considering as the US is actually pulling out at this moment in time. I can't imagine there's too many active um, engagements going on from the US side. But I could be wrong. I'm not updated on that aspect. It's just a question. There seems to be a growing momentum to the peace negotiations. Of course there would be. Leading analyst Ahmed Rashid, again, sorry if I butchered that name, told the BBC the talks were enormously significant and that we've never been as close to an end to civil war in Afghanistan. Now remember, this isn't to do with politics. The Taliban are not there to do with politics. The Taliban are there as Islamic terrorists. Don't be fooled by the language in what is being portrayed as. There is not a civil war. They are Muslim terrorists that are trying to form a caliphate. Simple as. The talks lasted for six days longer than any other previous set of discussions that have been held during recent months. In the middle of the talks last week, the Taliban announced one of the group's founding members, Mala Abdul Ghani Bahada, would be appointed the new head of the Taliban's political office in Qatar. Qatar! Because they don't support terrorism of any sign, of any kind, do they? They just have a political office in fucking Qatar. After recently being released from detention by Pakistani authorities, Mr. Rashid said Mala Bahada had a record of wanting peace and stability and could help persuade grassroots members to accept any deal that is reached. Really? Really? But yet will not talk to the actual government that is in power in Afgan Afghanistan. Interesting. Just, just fucking interesting. I don't even understand how this is actually even going anywhere. That peace is going to be brokered. What was discussed? The progress made seems to relate to two key issues. When will American-led forces be withdrawn from Afghanistan so that they can actually end up taking over the country again like they tried to do last time, which was one of the reasons why the conflict lasted for such a long time, if anybody cares to remember. A commitment from the Taliban that the group will not allow international jihadist groups like Al-Qaeda to use the country as a base in future. What about ISIS? What about ISIS? Islamic State for Syria and Afghanistan. What about them? Does that still count? Is that still part of it? The Taliban leader, speaking on condition of anonymity, said the committees would identify routes for the withdrawal and how much time is needed. We suggested six months, but we are flexible. He said the committees would also produce concentrate proposals on how the Taliban can serve, sorry, sever any links to Al Qaeda and would start work within the next week. Really? So the Taliban are going to be formed in the idea of Sinn Fein then, as in having a political office and trying to enact change the correct way. 
if you want to put it that way. Interesting. It's a good. It's an idea. That's a proposal. It's it's worked in Palestine for a very very long time with uh, the political ideology of Hamas. It's it's been there for a while. I mean, they haven't really had a an election in twelve years, but you know, it's worked apparently. But that, that's that's carry on. Let's carry on. The Taliban source added that another meeting with the U.S. would likely take place in February. Another source in the Taliban told the BBC that once an agreement had been drawn up, they would attempt to get other countries or international organisations to act as guarantors for it. So, so let me get this straight. You're trying to broker peace with the U.S. Nothing to do with your own government at this point in time, the Afghani government or anything else like that. But when you brokered peace with this, you're trying to suggest that you would like to have the rest of the world defend you for this? A terrorist group, you're trying to get the rest of the world to defend you for this. Amazing. Just, just, I can't believe that this isn't even being considered. I mean that, honestly. And I want this piece as much as anybody does, but this is not how you get it. What about a ceasefire? Both sides have said further talks are necessary to resolve outstanding issues. What remains unclear is how a ceasefire fits into current discussions. The Taliban position seems to be one that can only be declared once a withdrawal date for international forces has been agreed. In other words, we are not going to stop fighting you until you leave, and then we are going to focus our fighting on the Afghani government that we believe that you brokered and put into place on purpose to take control and force democracy upon us and change. Wait, wasn't that the issue that the Taliban was actually created for in the fucking first place? You mean yes? Never mind then. A separate high-ranking Taliban official suggested that the group was nervous about agreeing to a ceasefire before having established a firm settlement as it could be difficult to convince grassroots fighters to take up arms again after having laid them down. Wow, that's almost an interesting point there. That if they were actually able to convince them to drop their arms, that they don't actually think that they would actually be able to convince people to fight for them again. Interesting that, isn't it? It's almost like the grassroots don't actually believe in the process that's going on that they don't actually believe in the reasons why they're fighting, but they're almost forced to fight for some reason. The other crucial issue is when the Taliban will agree to, being, to begin talking directly to the Afghani government. Oh yeah, that, that might be a little bit crucial, might not it? You know, the government that is actually the legitimate government at this moment in time for Afghanistan might be a, a reason to talk to them. But you know, I could be wrong. The Taliban official said the committees due to be established would also produce recommendations on this. Amazing. So the people that are dictating on what you can and cannot do are the terrorists and they are the ones that are directing the time frame, the committees, the people they talk to. Literally, they are the ones in control of this peace talk. Interesting. So far, the insurgents have only engaged with the US, dismissing the administration of President Asfaf Gianni as puppets. Oh, that that seems to um, completely back up everything that I literally have just said. But, you know, that, that's, that's come off. What's the Afghan government's view? In pointed comments at the World Economic Forum in Switzerland earlier this week, Afghan President Asfaf Ghani, and again, sorry if I get that wrong, said 45,000 members of the Afghan security forces have lost their lives since he took office in 2014. It shows who is doing the fighting, he said. When asked about the progress of talks in Qatar, Qatar President Ghani responded seriously that the aim of the meetings was to bring the Afghan government and the Taliban into face-to-face -face discussions and negotiations. Then, the larger issue of the US presence and other international issues will be addressed. 
Wait, no, that's not the way that it is going because the Taliban have decided that they're not going to talk to the Afghan government until that they have agreed a withdrawal date with the US. The contradictions in the writing piece seem to have taken a funny form. That form seems to be in a form of a turban holding an AK-47 driving towards the government of the Afghan. Oh my god. Oh my god. Counting the cost of Trump's air war in Afghanistan. Before we even go into this, which I probably won't even bother going into that actually to be fair with you is how can you say that counting the cost of Trump's air war in Afghanistan when President Obama was there the longest and dropped the most bombs out of any president in history, including ones in World War I and World War II, in history, and you want to count Trump's air war in Afghanistan, not Obama's. Amazing. I'm not even going to go into that because it's just fucking going to be a hit piece on what President Trump's trying to do. Even though, if you are a non-interventionist, which I suppose some people would be, this would be the fact of Donald Trump actually instigating a form of peace and withdrawal. No other president has tried to even suggest or do that, and no other presidential elect has even tried to say or do that. And even if they have said that, like President Obama did in his second term for general election or uh, primaries, it was a case of nobody pulled him up on that and he never ended up pulling out. Oh dear, never mind, that did not come out right. But I'm not going to get into a hit piece on Donald Trump when we're talking about the Taliban. And unfortunately that's the end of it. Because no form of BBC news reporting would be without the fact of a hit piece on Donald Trump. See you later, guys. Thank you.